The second topic that I want to talk about is very important. It's easy, but it's very important. So try to follow me to understand this, because this is sometimes tricky if we don't pay attention to that. Look at this question. Um, the stress in the x direction is 62 megapascal. Stress in the y direction is 94 megapascal. They are both negative. And the shear stress is 42, and that one is negative as well. We want determining two parameters. Maximum in-plane shear stress and maximum absolute shear stress. What are these parameters? I want to understand what are these two parameters and what is the difference between these two shear stress. To understand this concept, I will use the concept of Mohr circle because that helps me visualize this. And that actually requires three-dimensional stress element, three-dimensional Mohr circle. So let me talk about a very simple case. Everything that we talked about so far is about two-dimensional stress element, two-dimensional Mohr circle, but I need to extend this topic into three-dimensional Mohr circle. For three-dimensional stress element, three circles, which two of them are inside another one. Let me consider this uh, two-dimensional stress element. I assume that sigma in the x direction is sigma x, sigma in the y direction is sigma y, and there is a shear stress. We can draw more circle for that, which is shown here. So there's nothing specific for this. However, we know that two-dimensional stress elements, they are coming from three-dimensional stress element. We assume that sigma z is zero, tau yz is zero, tau z x is zero. So in that case, I can simplify this three-dimensional stress element to this two-dimensional stress element. So assume that just in this case, Sigma x is 14, sigma y is 4, shear stress is 0. So in that case, if I look at this side, which is perpendicular to the z-axis, I would see this two-dimensional stress element. Okay, That is how we simplify the uh, three-dimensional stress element. Now, let me consider the three-dimensional stress element. Look at that from sides. Let me now look at x face of this three-dimensional stress element. Let me first talk about parameters in this Mohr circle. The intersection of this circle with the horizontal axis would be sigma p1 and sigma p2, which in this case they are 14 and 4. The radius of this circle gives me the maximum shear stress, which in this case is half of diameter. Diameter is 10, so radius would be 5. So that gives me the maximum shear stress for that plane, for uh, the purple plane. Now, I would like to consider that three-dimensional stress element and look at that from, say, the x-axis. If I look at this element from the x-axis, the stress in the y-direction is 4. How much would be a stress in the z-direction? That is 0. So a stress element for that green surface would be the one that we see a green element. Now, can you draw the more circle for this face? What would be the more circle for this uh, green surface? One point would be four. What is the other point? What is the stress in the horizontal axis? It's zero. So there would be two points. One is the origin of this plane, and the other one would be four. So one point would be here and the other point would be the origin, and the Mohr circle would be this one. So this circle is the Mohr circle for that green surface. Now let us talk about this. Can you tell me how much is the maximum shear stress in this circle, which is associated with this green surface? That would be two. That would be the half of the, the diameter of the circle. Okay. So we have determined maximum shear stress on the x face of this element. We can repeat that for the top surface. For top surface, what we would see would be like this. If I look at this three-dimensional stress element from top, there would be sigma x in the horizontal axis. Vertical stress is sigma z is zero. And I can draw more circle for that. 
So the Mohr circle in this case would be this large red circle. How much would be shear stress for this face? One edge is sigma P1, which is 14. The other one is zero. So how much would be diameter here? 14. And how much would be radius? Seven. So the shear stress in this case would be seven. Now, let us review this concept again. How much was the maximum shear stress in that plane? It was five. That was the radius of this blue circle. How much was the maximum shear stress in the green element? That was two. That was the radius of this green circle. And how much was the maximum shear stress in the red surface? That was seven, the radius of the larger circle. So I can ask this question in this way. How much is the maximum absolute shear stress along all faces that we have in this three-dimensional stress element? Seven. This is what we call it maximum absolute shear stress. So maximum absolute shear stress is the one that we might have on the hidden faces of this two-dimensional stress element. Does that make sense? What would be the maximum shear stress if I consider just this uh, blue surface? That would be five. This is what we call it in-plane maximum shear stress. Does that make sense? All right. The maximum in-plane would be the radius of the Mohr circle associated with the two-dimensional stress element. And the maximum absolute shear stress would be the largest radius of all these three circles, which in this case is for the red circle. I can put everything that we talked about together into a formula like this. I'm showing that on the bottom. If sigma P1 and sigma P2, they have the same sign. In this case, they are both positive. It says that sigma P1 times sigma P2 is larger than zero. The maximum in plane would be sigma P1 minus sigma P2 over 2. That would be the radius of this blue circle. So the equation for determining the maximum in plane is this one. And how much would be the largest absolute maximum shear stress here? Sigma P1 minus 0 divided by 2. So the largest principal stress divided by 2. So that is what we call it maximum absolute value. That's it. So here we can distinguish between the maximum in plane and maximum absolute values. Does that make sense? All right, we are not done yet. There would be another situation. And the other situation is this one. Look at this situation. One of these stresses is positive, another one is negative. Talking numerically, uh, sigma P1 is 10, sigma P2 is negative 3. If I drew the Mohr circle for that uh, blue surface, I would see this Mohr circle. How much would be the maximum shear stress for this circle? That would be half of diameter. Diameter here is 14, and half of that would be 7. So the maximum in-plane shear stress in this case is 7. The radius in this case would be, uh, sorry, 10 plus 13 over 2 is 6.5. It's not 7. 7 was for the previous circle. Here is 10 and negative 3, so the radius would be 6.5. All right, <clears throat> now let us talk about the green surface. For the green surface, what would I see would be negative 3, and in the horizontal axis is 0. So the Mohr circle would be like this. How much would be the radius for this case? 1.5. For the red surface, here, the red Mohr circle is smaller than the blue circle. The shear stress for that red surface would be, in this case, would be half of 10, which is 5. Can you tell me how much is the maximum absolute shear stress for this problem? It's the largest among all these three circles. How much is that? 6.5. Okay. Is it the same as the maximum in-plane shear stress? Yes, it is. So let me... Uh, show the values here. The maximum in plane is the, lar the radius of the larger circle, and in this case it is equal to the maximum absolute value. That happens when the sigma p1 and sigma p2, they have opposite sign. So it means sigma p1 times sigma p2 is smaller than zero, 
And in that case, sigma maximum in plane is equal to sigma max absolute, and that would be equal to sigma p1 minus sigma p2 over 2. So when you are answering questions related to the maximum in plane and maximum absolute values, the first step would be determining principal stresses, sigma p1 and sigma p2. Once we determine that, there would be two options. If they have the same sign, I will use this equation. The absolute value would be larger than the in-plane. And if they have opposite sign, I will use this equation. The absolute shear stress has the same value as the maximum in-plane shear stress. Okay, once we understand this concept, we can easily answer the question that I started with. Consider this stress element. Um, these are the values of uh, normal stress and shear stress. Remember, these are not the principal stresses. These are normal stresses in this plane. I need to determine principal stresses. So the first step would be determining principal stresses from this equation. Sigma P1 and P2 are calculated from this equation. If I do that, sigma P1 would be equal to negative 33.1. Sigma P2 would be negative 123. Which case is this one? Sigma P1 and sigma P2, they have the same sign. So, in this case, the maximum has two components. One of them is the in-plane, which is sigma P1 minus sigma P2 over 2. That would be 45. And the other value would be sigma P1 minus 0 over 2, which is 61.5. Here, the absolute maximum shear stress is larger than the maximum in plane shear stress, as we expected. Now let me talk about another situation here. In this case, there is a normal stress in the x direction equal to 106 with negative sign, in the y direction is 172 with positive sign, and the shear stress is 144. So principal stress for this case would be sigma p1 equal to 100, negative 167. Sigma P2 would be 233. Sigma P3 is always 0. And here, they have opposite sign. It means that the in-plane and the absolute values are equal to each other. So sigma max in-plane or absolute would be the difference between these two principal stresses, which in this case is equal to 200. The same is true for the absolute. Okay? Um, let me ask the question here quickly in this more circle. Can you tell me how much is the maximum absolute shear stress and the maximum in-plane shear stress quickly from the Mohr circle in this figure? First answer this. Should I expect seeing different absolute and in-plane shear stress or they are the same? They are the same. Why? Because one principal stress is negative over here and the other one is positive on the other side. So they should be equal to each other. How much that would be? That would be equal to the radius of this circle. And each grid here counts for 7 megapascal. So the radius here would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and say half. 8 and half times 7. That would be something close to 60 megapascal. That's the answer. That's it.